Hi, I'm Ron McMahon, Business Development Innovation Director at SGS Galson. Uh, this is a quick start video for how to get your smart sense going and understanding the principles and the operation of the smart sense. So the key element first to understand is the configuration or the different packages that we have for smart sense. The first package is a very simple indoor quality version that is used and uh, settings that you don't have to worry about any sort of uh, weather conditions and things like that. This is our standard indoor outdoor enclosure. Uh, typically, if it's indoors, it can be setting on a tabletop similar to this. Um, or if it's outdoors, obviously you want the centers down uh, like so. And the unit is uh, weatherproof. And then lastly is our sample capture device. And basically all that means is I have the ability now to uh, either start a pump or open a solenoid uh, in, in the effort of being able to take a sample uh, of a particular uh, event. And that can again be done with a whole air cylinder or with a pump uh, pulling air through media of any kind. All of the displays and all the information of these units exist on a web platform. So on the indoor outdoor unit, you can see the openings for the sensors right here. Uh, so these are again the same type of sensors, PIDs, uh, electrochemical sensors that you find in a typical um, four or five gas instrument. This particular device also has a particle sensor which would be comparative to say a TSI side pack or other um, uh, particle counters. Uh, in this unit, uh, the sensors where the cross is, this is where your sensors are located and this slit at the bottom is where the inlet is for the particle sensor. And then on our unit where we incorporate the sample capture device, same thing, these are our sensors here. And this also has a particle sensor. On the sample capture device we'll always have some sort of a inlet uh, for the actual sampling. If we're doing an air sample, uh, a whole air cylinder, or we're drawing air through uh, some media. This is a very, very simple unit. There's nothing for you to do with regards to pushing buttons, fresh air zero, calibration. Everything is done, and literally all you have to do is power on the device. Install it and power it on. So, outdoor unit for mounting. There are mounting holes in the back. We also provide a uh, cutout here so that you can put uh, just a zip tie here and then you can uh, do whatever you want as far as mounting this indoor or outdoor. Very, very simple. So basically it's, it's plug the unit in and, and it starts up. For outdoor devices, uh, we also have this sensor available. This is a, an anemometer that does wind speed and direction. Uh, so these have been oriented or, or, or mounted on these devices as well as on the sample capture box or they could be remote mounted, but these devices all wire into our system. So on this wind speed device, there is a small nick, if you will, in the plastics that indicate when it's installed, even if it's mounted onto a, a, one of these two cases, this notch needs to point toward north so that we reference the direction uh, properly um, as we look at the device. We can still collect the data, but then we have to do some corrective uh, corrections to the, to the direction but it's best if you can make this point directly due north. <clears throat> Prior to you starting the device, you will have received an email from us that has the web page, the, the URL, for SmartSense uh, for, your, for your basic interface, and it will include your username and your password. Uh, we encourage you to change your password once you get up and running uh, so that you are able to make sure that no one else can get access to your data. Um, and again, you'll get an email to that effect from us uh, prior to delivery of the units. So we recommend the first thing to do is to actually uh, log in so that you now can see the units uh, that you've ordered and start to monitor whether or not you start to receive data. So once you apply power, and we're going to do that now, uh, once you just plug in the unit either to its battery pack system, to its uh, battery pack solar system, or uh, uh, any wall outlet or power outlet, you'll notice that the unit comes on, red light stays solid, and the blue light flashes. The unit comes on, the blue light goes off, and the red light go off, and at this point it's now attempting to connect to the internet and, and to the server to capture data. So as it comes up, and this particular unit is set on a cellular modem, and, and today that's the majority of our units, Wi-Fi would behave exactly the same. Once it 
finishes that sequence, they go out and it comes back on and there's no red flash, and this is very important, no red flash, that means that the unit is now connected to the internet and to the web server. If when the blue light goes out, as you see right now, if it comes back on with no red flash, that means we've successfully co communicated data to the cloud and to the platform, and in a very short period of time, you'll see that on your application on your phone or, or on your computer. So if you notice there was no red flash, that means that we've communicated, and now if we look at our um, information on the web through our basic platform, uh, you'll be able to see the data coming in through what we call the time series tab. So uh, in just a second, you'll see the light go off. At this point, it's trying to communicate, and the light will come back on. Right after the blue light comes back on, you want to watch the other LED, which is red, to see if it flashes. If it flashes after the blue light comes back on, after a few seconds, that indicates that it is not connected to the platform, and it did not transmit that data. So you saw the quick red flash. That means this unit is not effectively communicating uh, to the cloud. Once your unit is plugged in and operating and the light sequence is as described, you now can go onto the web platform and you're able to see your data. The blue blocks represent 15 minute running averages. And down below that, there's a box that says okay or unknown. If it says okay, then it's connected. To make sure you are connected and, you're, and how effective your communication is, go to time series and time series shows you every the last, if you will, the last five minutes of communication. So if you have effective communication, it'll say one minute ago, two minutes ago, three minutes ago, four minutes ago, five minutes ago. And again, if you miss a few here and there, uh, that's okay. The unit will data log onto its SD card locally, and once it recommunicates re or reconnects, it will transmit, uh, start transmitting the older data, and it does it five, uh, five increments at a time. In other words, once it reconnects, it will transmit the new data point plus the five oldest data points. And it'll continue to do that until it completely uh, empties uh, the buffer on the SD card on the instrument itself. So it's, it, you know, that's a, that's, a, that's a big advantage that you don't lose data even if you don't have comms. You will be able to get that data. Once you verify it on your time series that you're getting the data on each unit that you've deployed, uh, then you're good to go. It, it's, it's set up. Uh, one thing that's critical is making sure that you're connected to a power source that cannot be interrupted. The only way that you're going to lose data is if you lose power. Otherwise, the unit's data logging the data internally. So just make sure that you're not on a, uh, a connection that someone can disconnect readily or flip a, a, a potential switch in a residence or in a building that actually turns off lamps and things uh, at night. So it's really important to verify that you do have power um, and, it's a, and it's a reliable power supply to your, to your device. And that's pretty much it. Uh, it's going to be real important to watch our uh, basic web interface video. Uh, and then if you do have sample capture, uh, we'll take you through the sample capture device uh, and how to operate that as well. And if you have any technical issues, again, we're available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week at 888-432-5227. It's on your screen right now. And we're here available to help you, uh, you know, make sure we're up and running and that you're effectively uh, communicating and, and getting your data. Thank you.